Um, yeah, so um, I, I suppose just before we continue, I also wanted to, uh, a brief kind of announcement. Um, many of you may be aware, uh, God brother of ours, His Grace, uh, Paul Shorten Pushner, who, uh, who was recently, last few days, passed away. So I wanted to take this opportunity to uh, offer uh, condolences to his family and friends. He was based in Port Elizabeth in South Africa. Um, from the very outset, actually, he helped establish that center and did a lot of preaching. Um, and and he, was, he was one of the devotees, um, one of the disciples who uh, shared also his remembrances. Uh, very nice, humble, soft speaking devotee. So um, uh, I'm sure we'll miss his association for sure. But nonetheless, uh, I'd like to invite His Grace Dover Krishna Prabhu, um, also a very long standing devotee. Uh, oh, I've had the pleasure, uh, hopefully, I can call him my friend, uh, you know, <laughs> hopefully, he considers me his friend. Um, yeah, over the years when I started going to Bangladesh with Guru, when Guru Maharaj was GBC there. Um, so that would have been, I think, early 1990s when I started to go to Bangladesh. And, um, and then I yeah, uh, met a uh, bright-faced uh, Brahmachari, still bright-faced. <laughs> uh, so it's very, very, it's always, uh, his association is much sought after. Right. Uh, so whenever you are in Bangladesh, you know, please um, make a point of uh, you know taking some time out and associating with Stuva Krishna. Uh, a little bit, many of you may not know um, probably here, so I'll give a small introduction. Uh, Stuva Krishna joined in 1988 in um, Amsterdam Temple, in fact, and after receiving the Bhagavad Gita just a year before that, so. It's like with many, I suppose, many devotees, they get a book and that book somehow changes their lives, right? It's not like any other book um, and any of Prabhupada's books, actually. They, you, can, you can't just read it. It demands action from you, <laughs> right? Kind of, uh, so it, it kind of compels you to do something, an inward journey, right? So as Dr. Krishna Prabhu joined in Amsterdam Temple, and he was only actually, yeah, 18 years old, right? So a young boy, in fact, uh, was initiated in Radesh in 1990, and second initiation in New Bible, just uh, a year after that in 1991. And uh, then, I guess, common in those days, uh, was took to book distribution and spent 11 years distributing Chila Prabhupada's books. Uh, traveling, all right. I guess mainly in Amsterdam, I guess. So Krishna Prabhu. Well, it was traveling Sankirtan party. So we mm -hmm. initially started in Amsterdam and uh, surroundings in Holland, but then oh. the Sankirtan group moved to Radhadesh, and then from Radhadesh we went with vans, small buses, and we went for two weeks from away from the temple and traveled from city to city and just with books like that, and was sleeping in the in the mm -hmm. Van, or in the Austrian. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's um, it's an austere. I, I'm I'm sure it's quite an austere service, but also uh, a nectarian service. Um, yeah, I yeah, I, I so I'm informed. <laughs> I've I've not really, I suppose, surrendered to the austerity so much. <laughs> so I can't comment firsthand. But for many, what many devotees tell me, is actually. Uh, Despite the austerity, there's a, a lot of reciprocation from Prabhupada and from Krishna when you do that service. Um, so I spent 11 years actually distributing Prabhupada's books and then entered into Grihastra Ashram. I uh, was married in December 1999 and uh, then became in charge of the uh, kitchen department in Radhadesh. Right? Uh, and that sort of like basically for four years. Right? Uh, 
And then there was two years in, in congregational preaching. And many of you may know, I guess, was that to do with a lot of the coaches that came? Because many of you, to some degree, they still do. They have, uh, Radadesh is um, a tourist attraction. Yeah. So many tourists from Belgium actually visit the, the temple uh, from, well, from Brussels rather. Brussels is about an hour and a half away by coach, I suspect. And um, so often you see like four to six coaches turning up, right? And it's quite remarkable, actually, when I when I first saw that, that uh, how many tourists actually, yeah, go out of their way when they come to uh, Brussels. And it's like, OK, we'll go to the temple here, right? Um, so so it's heading up uh, congregational preaching. That, and, um, and after that, he started working outside and started his own organic health food store. Uh, and he also has a son who's um, 14 years old. Right? What's just your son's name? Sorry, remind us. Rama. 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 Yes. Oh, okay, okay, wow. And, uh, and you're still running your business, I trust. Yes, uh, we're still uh, running the shop, yeah. All right. So there's a local shop and a um, lot of organic health products um i remember it was, yeah it was like avocado oil actually but, uh, uh, anyway uh so yes so this is a brief introduction to the study krishna Prabhu, and it's our uh, great privilege to have his association today um so <coughs> excuse me so if, if dear devotees you have any questions please feel free to ask um and I do have a habit of asking some questions. <laughs> I hope that you don't mind. Um, either you know, raise your hand or in the chat box, or you know, just you know, just shout out and uh, you know, ask your question. Right? So um, I, we, our format is quite sort of informal, right? Free flow. So I, I'm going to you know, hand over to yourself, Stuva Krishna Prabhu and um, you know, take us through a little bit about your journey, how you first met Guru Maharaj, like particular instructions that Guru Maharaj gave you, you know, particularly important ones that you felt were really beneficial for you in your spiritual life. So, okay. Thank you, Gaur Ari. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak about Guru Maharaj and my experience with him. Um, like you were already saying, that uh, I joined in 1988. I was 18 years old. Actually, I came with my mother to the temple. She made sure that everything was okay when she left me there. <laughs> I was very young. I just came from, you know, middle school. And um, I actually became uh, interested in Krishna consciousness because I received the Bhagavad Gita. And it struck me very much how Prabhupada was giving answers on all my questions. And so I was not under the uh, understanding that Prabhupada already passed away. So I was more or less wanted to join Prabhupada in his mission to spread Krishna consciousness. So when I joined, uh, of course, uh, I understood, okay, Prabhupada, he, he left the world. And uh, so uh, His Holiness Bhakti Charamaj was at that time GBC for Holland and Belgium. So he, he came on a very regular uh, notice. Huh? He, he was there very frequently. And, um, and my attraction to him was that he was mainly uh, um, a uniting factor in, in the temple, because at that time, uh, Bhagavan, uh, formal Acharya, Sonal Guru at that time, uh, he, he, he fell down and many of his disciples were very bitter and disappointed. So Guru Maharaj, he was there and he was really uniting the devotees together and um, making them again build up their faith and ma mainly in taking shelter of uh, Siddha Prabhupada. So that really uh, struck me very much how he was holding uh, Prabhupada Katas in the evening and uh, being very 
concerned and caring for the bodies. So it was really, really, uh, I felt really like if I need to take shelter of Prabhupada, I would like to do it through this person because this person is so close to Sri Prabhupada. So that was my main uh, inspiration for taking a shelter of Guru Maharaj. So at that time, um, I think the, the Sona Acharya system stopped in 1980. Six eighty-seven around that time when Bhagavan fell, then it really fell apart. And then there was the opportunity for other Prabhupada disciples to become guru. You may correct me if I'm wrong, but that was that's my understanding. So uh, Bhakti Maharaj, he just became actually guru, and it was only I think Govinda from Swiss. He was one of the first disciples, and yet Balaram. He was also visiting Amsterdam at that time, and he was his uh, servant. But uh, for the rest, there were not many disciples uh, of, of Guru Maharaj. So he had a lot of time. He was DBC, and uh, and he had, didn't have so much disciples. So, and we were brahmacharis. Uh, we were book distributors. So he was always inspiring us to to do book distribution, and this is the way to please Sri Prabhupada again. It was an emphasis on pleasing Sri Prabhupada. So it was uh, very nice. Um, so when I, um, one, one incident that happened in the Amsterdam temple around that time, I was dressed in brahmachari clothing, but my understanding of brahmachari, of course, was very naive. So anything, you know, they told me to wear, I would wear. So we colored our own dhoti, so I colored my dhoti and kurta, and it became pink, more or less. You know, it was not really <laughs> orange. So I came up to to Guru Maharaj, and uh, I was supposed to serve him. So of course he noticed my pink uh, outfit, and then uh, I was walking through the hall with him in the temple, and then uh, one. Um, young uh, girl, maybe four or five years old, she was the daughter of a devotee. She came in a small pink dress, you know, <laughs> and she was, you know, showing herself to Guru Maharaj, you know, and she was asking, Guru Maharaj, do you like my dress like this? And he said, he said to her, yes, it's pink, and pink is the color of Maya. <laughs> I prefer, and then he points to his dress, saffron. That's the color of, of Krishna, or it's the color of his uh, Brahma Jyoti. So, is, so I looked at myself and I think, okay, I have to change my color of, <laughs> it has to be saffron, not pink. So indirectly, he, he, he was very uh, kind to instruct us uh, like that. So that's one uh, instance. Another instance, um, I was, uh, he asked me to shave his head. And uh, while, of course, you know, you know, you're very young, 18, 19 years old, you have no idea what shaving head means. Uh, to me, it was really, so I had shaving knives and I put shaving foam on his head. And I was trying to do my thing, but it I really didn't work. So then I, I told Guru Maharaj, okay, I will go out and I will find some better shaving knives. And then I was looking all over the temple. And then when I came back, he already had shaven his head himself. You know? But he didn't, he didn't, uh, you know, was angry or he was not disturbed, nothing. He was just as normal, you know, he would do it himself, no problem. So that was another incident, which is, uh, I very vividly uh, remember. So then um, one time, of course, we were helping in the kitchen and there was one devotee in the kitchen and he was quite, uh, he had a quite temper, you know. So when you, you would help in a temple, he would sometimes curse or throw with things. <laughs> so I was a little bit shocked by that and taken back. So I, I, I inquired from Guru Maharaj because we know that, you know, when you offer with 
your the food with a certain consciousness, the consciousness it goes into the food. So I was inquiring from him that um, we have on the body and he doesn't, uh, you know, it's quite temper and throwing sometimes things, knives and quite, you know, intense. So uh, is that affecting the food? I was trying to ask very, you know, uh, politely or, you know. And uh, Sinan Gurumaj, he just thought about it. And he, then he told me that actually, it's better if you cook yourself. So if you have time, he told me, you should learn how to cook. So, you know, I, I found that was the, you know, all time, although it was in 19, uh, 90 or something just before even before i got initiated still i remember it and uh and that instruction of guru Mahaj really uh you know inspired me to try to learn to cook and so we took the opportunity when there was a sunday feast when you would come back from sanctan then on the sunday morning we would go to the kitchen and try to learn how to cook and then later on, when uh, I uh, decided to get married, I was in Amsterdam and I was engaged with my wife, Lakshmi Kunja Devi Dasi. Um, then Aradides heard about it, that I got engaged. And the first thing uh, they, they asked me, do you want to become the head cook of Aradides? And I was not, you know, what I was not, Still not sure what I'm going to do to maintain, you know, my my family. So and they said, don't worry, don't worry. You can come to Radhes. We will have a house for you. We will have a salary for you. We will maintain you. You can, you know, be sure it will be okay. So then I said, okay, that was it. And uh, so from that on, I could just live within the Radhes community have my own place to stay and have an, have an income as a Guryastam. So I thought, yeah, although it was, uh, you know, 20 years ago that he, he gave me that instruction, but it was very relevant for me after, uh, after that time to, uh, you know, give me a, a, a service, even as, as a Guryastam. So I, I was always, uh, always remember that. And also, we know that Gurmach was very uh, keen himself on cooking. Um, uh, one time I cooked for him and because I had many other things to do at the same time, I, I didn't put my full heart in it and maybe something got also burned. So then uh, Gurmach was eating it and uh, he says, he told me, okay, tomorrow I will cook. So then uh, next day uh, he, he he asked for all the ingredients and he he cooked himself. What did so you what did cooking, you Sorry. What did you cook? I made uh, just a sabzi with zucchini and uh, tomato and uh, some cheese. But I think because uh, normally you bake the zucchini in the tomato, so it might be that I put the fire too high or uh, you know, it was at that time uh, I had many things on my plate, so I was doing it more as a side thing. They asked me to do it because uh, I, I knew how to cook. But still, you know, it was not good, but uh, Gurmach was not, uh, you know, criticizing or anything. He just said, okay, it's better that I cook myself. <laughs> okay, and um, so my first initiation, uh, was in Radha Desh. Uh, that was in 1990. Um, and um, I got initiated with two other devotees. Their names were uh, Vishwarup and Raghunath. They both two were initiated at the same time with me. And I remember at the time of initiation, uh, when they were handing out the beads, you would say there for regular principles and um, then he would ask um, uh, and on a codices how many rounds you will chant or you he will say as you chant 16 rounds and on a codices how many rounds you would chant 
So I, I felt like, you know, I didn't want to, you know, make a promise which I might not be able to keep because I knew they he was inspiring the audience to chant more on a card, 25 rounds. So he actually he wanted me to say 10, 25 rounds on, to make that promise. But uh, I told him uh, 16. <laughs> So, but, but Guru Maharshi said, you just try to chant more as you can. On a courtesies, you just try to chant more. like that. And, uh, and he also made you promise that uh, whatever happens, never leave ISKCON. It was also very important on initiation. Then uh, after initiation, uh, we went all up to his room where he was, uh, you know, was back to the devotees, the Sanyasra and Radhas. And we were sitting down and he had a talk with everybody. And then at a certain point, he was asking me, so uh, do you like your new name? He was asking me, do you like your new name? And actually I didn't really like my new name. <laughs> I really expected the name of Krishna, but I, my name was Stoka Krishna. And so I didn't say anything. And then uh, Guru Maharaj told me, well, it's at least better than Bhakta Stefan. You know, that was my Stefan <laughs> of my birthday. <laughs> so uh, like that. So this, this kind of remembrance I have at that time. And then later on, um, one year later, uh, we were on traveling Sankatan and suddenly we got a news that uh, we have to come back to Radhadesh. So we came back to Radhadesh. And then uh, at the time, the, the president, he, he told me that I have to go to New Mayapur because there, Bhakti Jaramaj is there and you should get uh, your second initiation. So uh, then we went there and uh, I got my second initiation. And uh, what I still remember is that during the initiation ceremony, I was just sitting there, nothing happened. I, they don't reach you out beads. They don't put the neck beads around your neck. They don't give you a new name. So it was, it was a little bit strange for me. I didn't really know what to expect. So, but afterwards, uh, Guru Mahaj said that all those who got second initiation, they should come uh, one by one to my room. So I also went uh, to his room and uh, he told me to take off my uh, up, upper clothes. And then uh, he took one Brahman thread and he put it around me like that. And then uh, he gave me a paper and went with the, the mantra, the Gayatri mantra. And then uh, we together went through the mantras. Uh, for the proper pronunciation. I read about it that the guru would whisper the mantra in your ear, but uh, that, that it went like this. That's how, how I received this uh, Gayatri uh, initiation uh, from Guru Maharaj. Well, it was very, uh, very personal, personal thing. So I really, uh, I, I felt really honored uh, to have such a yeah personal uh, personal dealings with Guru Maharaj. Um, then, uh, of course, there are many uh, incidents. I don't remember them all because long time ago. Uh, but one incident I very very clearly remember. And uh, because we, as Sankatan devotees, we were allowed to go once in two years to India. And it was at my uh, second visit to India, I think. And uh, Guru Maharaj was uh, giving a seminar in the, I think it's the Lotus building. He had his residence there. Is that correct, Gaurahari? Yeah, that's correct. It's the Lotus building. Or was it called? Because before he, before the quarters that Guru Maharaj has now, uh, he stayed in another room. And I 
for the life of me, I can't remember the words, a conch building, I think, which is attached to the temple itself. It's attached to the temple, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, right it's a... if you go out of the temple immediately to your left, you know, you go up the stairs like that. And That's right. All the That'd way up. The... All That'd the way be... up. So That's he was correct. giving, uh, we were arriving there as brahmacharis in Maipur and, uh, you know, we want, of course, uh, attend the Guru Maharaj seminar and, but he was always uh, surrounded by uh, quite a group of uh, Bengali brahmacharis. It was like he, they more or less claimed him for them, you know, that was like the impression, you know, you could not come close. They were serving him they were doing everything you know and uh, more or less like you know a very strong you know circle around Gurumat. so but at that time um, the guru thing was quite an, quite sensitive so somehow other uh, at that time guru Maharaj didn't want to have garlands so while giving the seminar, he would not have any garland. But normally when there is a speaker, you give the garland to the speaker. And at that time, uh, Gurmas was not uh, ha having any garland, so he didn't want to have any garlands related to the guru issue at that time, which was sensitive. And, um, and, and uh, one night I had a dream of Guru Maharaj, and Guru Maharaj came to me and he he offered me a, a garland, you know, put me the garland around my neck, you know. And it was strange, of course, you know, that the guru gives the disciple the garland. So I was, of course, taken back by that. But I thought when I, when I woke up, I, the first reaction was for me that, oh, I have to give a garland to the guru. The guru. I have to return the favor, you know, or something like that. So the first thing I went, I went to the Pujari room in the in Mayapur and asked if there were any Maha garlands. You know. And so they didn't have any uh, garlands, they were already taken. The only the garlands they had they were small ones. So, and I had to be on time because the seminar would start after Guru Puja. So, uh, so what I did, I tied all the small garlands which I had, I tied them together and made them in one big garland. And so I, I, I came there at the seminar and the seminar already just started. So every, the whole floor was already filled with devotees sitting down and Guru Maharaj was already sitting on the, on, on the seat. And so uh, you had this whole group of brahmacharis which, you know, was surrounding. So I tried to step through them to come to Guru Maharaj to offer him the garland. And it was of course strange because no, everybody knew he doesn't take any garlands. So I went to him and offered him the garlands. And Guru Maharaj, he accepted the garland. He was really appreciating the garland, you know, with a smile, you know. And everybody saw it, of course. So um, then the next day, I came to the seminar. And then Guru Maharaj, he was, I think, buried by garlands, you know. Everybody had... <laughs> Giving him garlands, you know, so it was very, uh, very, very, very nice, a very nice uh, incident, which I uh, remember. Um, of course, there are also uh, incidents in India, uh, like I went to India with the Centennial. I don't know if you were there, Gora Hari, in 1996. No, uh, it wasn't there. Of course, Guru Maharaj had his Vyasa Puja at that time in Mayapur. So I went there for Krishna Janamastami in Calcutta. And at, at the, after, the day after was the Prabhupada Centennial uh, Festival in Calcutta. And Guru Maharaj was there. They, I think they rented out a huge auditorium. And... Uh, in Calcutta, and then they had a big stage. And on the stage, they had glorification of Siddha Prabhupada. And Lokanath Swami was there also. And, uh, and they brought all kinds of preparations, food, you know, to offer to Siddha Prabhupada. Hundreds and hundreds of preparations were brought up. 
And uh, yeah, Guru Maharaj was dancing, ecstasy, uh, with, together with Lokanath Maharaj. And after the Prashana was offered. Hi, Ball, hi, Ball. Hi, Ball. Hare Krishna. And so um, then uh, while they were dancing, you know, they had Kirtan. You can imagine a huge auditorium, you know, uh, dancing in the Kirtan. And Guru Maharaj was just taking some of the Mahaprasadam and putting it in Lokarat Maharaj's mouth. And Lokarat Maharaj was taking the Mahaprasadam and putting it in Guru Maharaj's mouth. So it was a very ecstatic uh, scene. Um, another incident, which was uh, because after that, uh, the Piyasa Puja uh, was uh, celebrated in Mayapur temple. And um, there was something to do with the, the Piyasa Puja book they, uh, they offered to Guru Maharaj. I mean, the temple was gorgeously decorated. Everything was so paka organized. And uh, a lot of devotees came also from Europe. But there was something with the Vyasa Puja book. Uh, Guru Maharaj uh, was going through the Vyasa Puja book and every page he found a mistake. And he became quite angry. So you can imagine if you have a, on the Vyasa Puja day, your Guru Maharaj becoming very angry on how the Vyasa Puja book is done. That is quite, uh, and the person actually who was responsible for the Vyasa Puja book was also there. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Guru Maharaj said at a certain point, if I find one more mistake, you know, you're going one page by page. So he said, if the next page has a mistake, I will, I will stop and walk off the Vyasa Sun and you can forget about the whole Vyasa Puja book celebration. So serious it was. Mm. So everybody was really uh, very nervous. And, uh, and then this, this devotee who was the organizer, I, don't, I forgot his name. And uh, he actually just broke down and started crying in front of the Guru Maharaj. And trying to, you know, apologize and things like that. But I was really, uh, it was really intense. And he was saying, uh, Guru Maharaj, he was saying that I didn't want this Vyasa Puja uh, celebration. You, I agreed on it, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually regretting that I agreed on it. Like this, that was the, the scene. So it was very, uh, very intense. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. In, those, in those days, many, I mean, maybe it's not done so much now, or I've not seen. Uh, we used to have quite big Vyasa Puja books. Uh, yeah. Which yeah. Um, two or three hundred pages uh, in, produced in color. Um, and yeah, and it was quite, I suppose, to some degree, it was quite expensive as well, a certain amount of cost involved. And uh, yeah, there's, yeah, there, of course, <laughs> it's quite an intense service producing a book like that. Yeah, uh, of course, mistakes in it, then, yeah, it's not ideal, as you say, Stephen Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was so happy I was not part of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I guess, yeah, now we don't do that so much. Uh, and, um, yeah, and that's probably one of the reasons why as well. But yes, continue. <laughs> yeah, so so Gurmaj could be uh, soft as a rose, but uh, so hard as a thunderbolt. Uh, for me, uh, I had uh, several times, uh, I got severe uh, chastised and put on my place. Uh, like one time in Radhadesh, um, I was in charge for, you know, I was his servant. Huh? And uh, so he told me, okay, uh, I will sit on the, on the floor. You can bring the prashanam and we'll eat here. So the, it was arranged. You will sit there, you will have a table, you will bring the prashanam. 
there were devotees down in the kitchen who were cooking. Then he wanted to have uh, Italian, so they made uh, pasta and, and things like that. So, but then just before uh, everything was set uh, to serve, he, he started inviting uh, the godbrothers, and the temple president, and anybody who he could think of there starting bring in. And then he was saying, okay, I will not sit here. We'll arrange for a table. So then we had to bring a big table inside and we didn't know how many people. So we had to gather the chairs and we had to tell the cook that they have to cook more. And, you know, so it was really on the last moment, very intense uh, organization. And, um, and I was just upstairs organizing that. So I was not aware of what was going down in the kitchen, how that would, was going on. So I was more or less dependent on those devotees who, who managed that. But of course, I was the one who was supposed to serve the devotees with the food they would bring me up. <laughs> and uh, so it was like, you know, I think four or five, you know, proper disciples. And then of course, uh, Rita Chataya, he was there, temple president. So it was a full uh, full table with all senior senior vice novels. Huh? So and Gurmach was welcoming them and making them comfortable and saying what they will get as, as prasadam and how nice it is. <laughs> so then, uh, of course, uh, the anxiety was building up, and so then I was there practically alone serving. So they brought up uh, the spaghetti, but they didn't bring up the sauce. So I was going out into the room with a bowl of spaghetti and I was going one by one serve the spaghetti on the plate. So after finishing the last person to serve the spaghetti, Guru Maharaj, which I served first, of course his spaghetti was probably already cold, you know. So he says, well, where is the sauce, you know? So I had to run back and try to find the sauce. And then Guru Maharaj, he told me in front of all this uh, senior Vaishnavas that actually I lost my appetite like that. Yeah. So then I was standing there with the bowl of spaghetti in my hand. Yeah. What should I do? And then he explained to me actually that, uh, you know, we, we, why we join ISKCON. He said, we join ISKCON because we want to serve. And uh, it's according to our service uh, capacity that we, we, we make as advancement in Krishna consciousness. So the, longer, the more we become expert in serving, the more we will advance in Krishna consciousness. So I think because of this whole scene, the intensity, I very, very clearly remember what Guru Maharaj was saying that at the moment. I think if I would not have that intense experience, maybe I would not have taken it so serious. <laughs> so, uh, but at the end, uh, we managed to serve and everybody uh, took prasadam. So uh, it was okay. But it was uh, sometimes very, very, very intense. Uh, um, one other time uh, when I came to Guru Maharaj, that was in, uh, must be around 1999, no, 1999, 1999, 1998, something. And um, I asked Guru Maharaj for, for the blessings to get married. And, uh, and he looked at me and uh, the only thing he was saying uh not you also something like the fine the last brahmachari left also is getting married <laughs> but uh, later on I, I met him uh in india and uh, in Vrindavan, and we we i was serving him uh, prasadam there and uh, and actually i was uh, apologizing to guru Maharaj for any offense i would made in the past because there were you know some difficulties in the yatra i had some difficulties with the authorities and all these things 
And at a certain point, actually, uh, Guru Maharaj asked me if I would, wouldn't want to come to America. Uh, because they had, uh, at that time, I think there was this bar, bar factory, they were making bars. Ram bars was it called, I think. I'm not 100% sure. Fruit and nut bars. Fruit and nut yes. bars. Yeah. I, I'm selling them now in my shop, this kind of bars, not made by devotees, but this is some <laughs> kind of uh, healthy bars, yeah. Yeah. So he was asking me to, he said, look, uh, they don't want you here in this Yatra. Why don't you come to America? And actually, I, I didn't, uh, I told Guru I said, actually, this, I, I didn't feel like I want to go away just like that because I, I want to make it uh, work. And, uh, but I always felt like, you know, I, I, I didn't uh, surrender immediately to well, Guru Maharaj, what he asked me to do. So later on in Vrindavan, I, I, I told him personally that I apologize and I asked him for forgiveness and uh, tried to explain the situation, what happened. But he, he, he didn't mind and he said that, uh, and I asked him what to do and he says, just, just go and go over down Parikram. And uh, when he was just saying that, uh, you know, such a heavy weight from the shoulder went, you know, just the relief, you know, that uh, you just continue, although you may have committed offenses or you may have done wrong things in devotional service, but uh, if you just continue your devotional service, you know, your devotion to Krishna, your, your puja, your chanting of your rounds, and try to correct yourself in your dealings with the Vaishnavas, then you don't have to worry. It's not, uh, every, everybody has its ups and downs like that. So it was, uh, for, the, for me, it was that, that time that I had with Guru Maharaj was very comforting, you know, very uh, giving me relief that, uh, yeah, maybe we take it a little bit too serious sometimes, you know, and we should become a little bit more understanding that uh, we have our shortcomings, but if we continue in our devotional service, these things will, will uh, improve, we will improve. So, no, this, yes, no, I, understand. Our... I understand what you're saying, and it's a difficult, it's a difficult it's a challenge, isn't it? I mean, I, I remember also Guru Maharaj said to me, at one point he said to me to move to South Africa. And mm. uh, so South Africa was, you know, this was pre, pre, yeah, it was apartheid, apartheid time. And, <laughs> uh, it was, you know, a completely kind of different setup socially, economically, et cetera, completely different. And, and, and of course, yeah, I mean, I couldn't surrender to that idea, but, but you know, as you say, we continue in our service in whichever capacity we can, you know, do that. And uh, I mean, Guru Maharaj didn't, didn't mind or object or didn't push it, um, but uh, uh, yeah, so I think, you know, for me at least it was like, and I'm sure for everybody like in that opinion yourself, you know, you're still connected, right? And you're still doing service. And, and that was the main criteria. Right? Yes. And that's how yeah. some, I kind of try to resolve that kind of inner conflict in a way uh, like that. Right. Exactly like you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel you, you stay connected. That was the main important thing for me that I felt like, you know, I was not rejected or I was completely disconnected. It was, uh, that was not, that was not the point. It was just, you will always be connected as long as you, you know, continue your, your service in any, in, in your capacity you can. Like that. Yeah. Yes. Well, I wanted to sort of just quickly ask a question about, uh, I mean, you mentioned Prashadam service. Uh, that's also another quite, you know, uh, yeah, it's an, <laughs> an intense, you know, when you have to, and as you say, when senior Vaishnavas, Guru Maharaj will invite to take prasadam with him. And so it can be quite, you know, a daunting task, 
uh, and uh, so I appreciate what you're saying. It's like, and yeah, you're 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 the servant who's there in the room serving the prashadam. The cooks are somewhere else, sometimes six floors down, <laughs> right, in another area, and uh, and you're kind of like having to run or get somebody to run in between, bringing preparations. Um, and but yeah, I mean, Guru Maharaj is like he's he's kind of <clears throat> well, he had he, you know. Whenever he ate prashadam, or at least something I noticed, it was always very pakka. It was very, you know, simple things like uh, he, he, you know, he, he taught me how to lay a table. In fact, right? and me coming from England and you know, brought up an English background, I, I didn't really know how to lay a table. So he's, you know, he said, "Well, this is where the napkin goes. This is where the forks go. This is where the knives go. This is how you place them." So it's that level of detail, right, that Guru Maharaj had. And, and it wasn't, you know, for, for the kind of just, just for the sake of it, but it, it was detail and etiquette that needed to be there. Right? Yeah. Um, and, and as you say, simple, like serving pasta or spaghetti. And uh, I remember one incident, uh, cutting cheese, right? And if the cheese was, you know, you slice cheese, and it was had to be about a millimeter thick or thin, I should say, right? So if you, you know, it wasn't a case of just slicing cheese in a block and say, you know, offering that with if you it was, if it was cheese and biscuits, it was you know it had to be sliced uh, evenly, right? And approximately a millimeter thin. <laughs> Any more than that, and you'd be chastised. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so these are, these are the kind of you know details right, and to do with service and and ultimately with etiquette actually right, and um, that Guru Maharaj has right. so so I just wanted to share that with you and and maybe some I mean uh, some of the other devotees here listening today um, any sort of questions or, or particular points that uh, you also experience and want to share let me. I think we have, oh, let me see. Okay, so yeah, this is Bindu Mati Priya. Uh, thank you for the beautiful pastime and organizing, uh, taking a lot of long today, especially instruction, serving expertly, their advancement, and will make advancement as Guru Maharaj Vyas Puja is also coming up, oh, I'll be hearing this remembrance session later. Okay, so she's not a, not a question, but uh, an appreciation <laughs> as such. <laughs> so thank you, Bindu Mataprija. Uh, any other devotees have a question that they'd like to pose to Stokal Krishna Prabhu today? Okay. Maybe. Anything else you'd like to share with us, Mr. Krishna Prabhu? Oh, well, I don't know about that particular, uh, because like I was saying, um, Guru Maharaj has this re uh, quality of you uniting people together, mm -hmm. making right. them, you know, work together. And that's why he was always emphasis, emphasis, emphasizing on the point that your love will be shown to me how you cooperate with each other. And um, and he was also uh, in, I think it's in the Abhay Charan uh, video, when Prabhupada uh, would go on the Jaladuta and he would get a heart attack. Mm -hmm. That actually, uh, this heart attack was actually an attack of, of, of Kali. Mm -hmm. uh, Kali uh, is in charge of the age of quarrel. And hypocrisy. So, and he he wanted to stop Prabhupada spreading Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. So his heart attack on Jaladuta was actually the the agents or Kali himself who were attacking uh, Prabhupada. So Guru Maharaj would always say that uh, when we crawl in Iskon amongst the bodies, it's actually Kali who is influencing us. He says, where there's quarrel, there is, there is Kali. So he says, our movement cannot be 
destroyed from outside, but it can be destroyed from inside. And uh, yeah, when Guru Maharaj was preaching and touring the world, it was I, I found it was always a very strong emphasis on that point that we have to be united and do things together and cooperate and, and learn how to uh, associate with each other in a very loving, caring way. And uh, so I think that was uh, it, it was uh, a way, his preaching was as a way to uh, heal uh, uh, devotees from uh, developing uh, uh, distrust you know, in, in, in society or, you know, because of the fall downs of many uh, gurus. And he came there to, to heal the devotees and to, uh, again, bring back faith in, in the association of devotees. And, uh, and how he did it was very, uh, yeah, amazing. Because wherever he would go, devotees would, again, come back to the temple, come back to Krishna consciousness, and again, uh, take up uh, service. So he really had that uh, effect on people, that uh, uniting uh, effect, you know, bring people again together. And especially together under the umbrella of, of uh, ISKCON. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was yeah, never I claiming that we are uh, his disciples. Are always, you know, we are under the, the guidance of Sri Prabhupada. So. And um, and it was really uh, very remarkable how he, he really was uh, emphasizing that all the time. And uh, I think that was the the strength of his uh, his uh, preaching and. Uh, and uh, proving how how much he was loving Siddha Prabhupada, how he was very uh, dedicated to to Siddha Prabhupada and Siddha Prabhupada's movement, that he would not uh, tolerate any attack on the movement, or he would not tolerate any uh, dissent of the movement. He was very protective towards uh, ISKCON as as a society. And he was also very protective towards the devotees uh, of the society. And uh, so it was really, uh, you know, if you, if you, if you saw that, uh, it was really, uh, it, it really took you, you know, like this, this person is really, you know, he would do anything for, for, for his He was fully, fully surrendered. That was nice to, because many times you would give up, you know, but if you would uh, see Guru Maharaj, how convinced he was and determined and all these uh, wonderful qualities, then uh, it would give you strength to, to, to go on and continue also. Yeah. No, you're right. I mean, I didn't hear it myself, but uh, I was told that uh, Guru Maharaj once, he, he turned to one devotee and said, it was obviously he was having some difficulties, you know, with authorities, etc." And and then Guruma just simply turned around and said, "Well, if you think that you're having difficulties, don't think you're the only one who's having difficulties." Yeah, yeah, you know, it's like something like that. And you know, but Guruma, yeah, he 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 remained loyalty loyal to Iskon, and it's not as if Guruma didn't have difficulties, or you know, those times when it, maybe he felt, well, I could go and do something else, right? But he, he maintained, he, he was dedicated to ISKCON and Srila Prabhupada's ISKCON, serving the mission, protecting ISKCON and ISKCON devotees. Yeah. And, you know, he did that up until his last because, you know, he, he, he left Ujjain to go to America, to Deland, just to, you know, instruct and be with devotees and develop the Deland project, in fact. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, your spot. You're absolutely right in that regard, right. and yeah, I mean, uh, it's you know, it's not easy by any means, and I think many devotees have, you know, their own experiences. Uh, I'm sure, right? Um, 
there will always be difficulties because I guess we all have our different natures and to lesser or greater degree, our false ego perhaps gets in the way and then, you know, clash is inevitable. But, uh, but yeah, Guru Maharaj put all of that to one side and he often was sent to zones which were, had difficulties, problems. And he was, you know, one, one amazing qualities as you wonderfully described to Krishna Prabhu, was he was able to bring these conflicting parties, which on the face of it, you'd think would never agree. <laughs> it was impossible. <laughs> yeah. and, and they would, you know, come together in harmony, right? Uh, yeah. often, you know, often with pizza. <laughs> so, <laughs> prashadam, you know, serving prashadam, as, as, you, as many of us know, was also central to one of the loving exchanges that, you know, Guru Maharaj had. So thank you, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, any other questions? Anything? Any other questions that, that devotees might have or comments? Yeah. I'd very much encourage you to do so. Uh, it's not often that we get, you know, association of uh, an advanced devotee like Stephen like Krishna who's worshiping such wonderful, beautiful deities in the background. I'm, I'm just stunned by your deities, rather. <laughs> Next time you come to Radhadesh, you come to my house. I'm going to have to, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful deities. Uh, wow. And maybe any question on deity worship? There you go. You see a question on uh, worshipping deities, Radha Krishna at home. Right. Because uh, I think Radhran is holding, is she, she's. I can't quite see it, but is there a little parrot there? It's a small bird. I don't know what kind of bird. bird. Oh, okay. Yeah. She's a messenger. Right. She's Maybe. Uh, it's not a parrot. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's one of those messengers in Vrindavan. Beautiful. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you, Stoke Krishna Prabhu. Thank you so, very much, Gorari. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate it. No, no, it's uh, our, our privilege. And uh, forgive my shortcomings, any offenses that I may have committed. And um, we certainly you know, look forward to all your association. Well, not next week, as, as I mentioned before, we have the Prabhupada Memorial Festival. And uh, of course, Guru Maharaj's Vyas Puja. So you know, I wanted to give, also give devotees an opportunity to attend those events. So um, we'll resume again the week after. So maybe Great. you can um, lead us in one round of Hare Krishna, Maha Mantra. So if you can, happy for you all to unmute yourselves and uh, we will follow Stoga Krishna Prabhu in one round of chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. You mean around on the beat? Uh, this, uh, yeah. One one mantra. Okay. Hare Krishna. Krishna Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Rama Hare Rama Hare. Krishna Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama Hare Rama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.